And we're going to stick with oil now and take you to Vivek Dar, who is the commodities analyst at the Commonwealth Bank and who's been watching this oil price closely. Vivek, many thanks for your time. Can I just start with uh, really just the response of the oil price to Israel's attack on Iran over the weekend? Were you at all surprised by either A, the price response, or B, just how Israel really, if you like, made those strategic attacks? So look, I'd say it's the, the latter that was a bit surprising. I, I thought in terms of the scale of aggression, this was certainly on the low side. And to target no oil infrastructure, no nuclear assets, and uh, no civilian infrastructure really meant that they heeded what the US had said. So this was very much on the low aggression side. And the oil price reaction to that is less surprising. Because if you have an attack of that, of that low magnitude, you would expect to see that that oil price premium be given up. And we saw oil prices, Brent especially, come off about 4.5%. So in some ways, it's been surprising how we've seen um, Israel respond. But it doesn't mean that we are definitely in the de-escalation phase. Uh, this, this situation in the Middle East is still very much volatile. And these tensions can escalate very quickly. And we still think that the next few months will be a period where, where there will be an opportunity for both Israel and Iran to directly engage each other. Well, OK, can I go to this? Because you and I have spoken this year about also the response of OPEC+, Plus, uh, where it really has kept its uh, production up. So, in many ways, with the world's economy slowing, um, there has been a situation where the, the world has got more oil than perhaps it actually needs right now. So, given the fact that there was no disruption in supply from Iran necessarily, this means, again, it takes significant pressure, not just off the oil price, but also off inflation rates around the world. That's right. That What, what we're seeing play out, and, and for us, this has been a very underrated factor in terms of what does OPEC plus do. Now, this group, they're sitting on a significant amount of spare oil capacity. And they have basically been sidelining supply in order to prop up oil prices. But the problem with their policy, and this really became uh, very apparent in 2024, but will likely become even more apparent in 2025, is that all the increases in global oil demand is being met by non-OPEC supply increases. So we're talking US, Canada, Guyana, Brazil, that situation is just untenable and unsustainable for OPEC plus to keep seeding market share to uh, non-OPEC plus. And if we see this continue, it will just mean the relevance of OPEC plus reduces over time. So at some point, OPEC plus will have to defend market share. And we could see this really play out as soon as December. And I think markets have really called out OPEC plus policy in the last six months. And we can see that whenever we see Iran and Israel directly confront each other, because in April when they did that, Brent spiked above $90 a barrel. This time around, if we look at early October, it spiked about $80 a barrel. So we've seen Brent oil prices take off about $10 a barrel just because of these oversupply fears. And we think they're quite warranted. So we're calling $65 to $75 a barrel for Brent with upside risks tied to what's happening with Middle East tensions. But this oversupply complex, I think it's here to stay for 2025. OK, so because there's two ways in which they can respond. They can either, A, cut back production significantly to defend the price, or, B, they can go in and put significant amounts of oil in to try and, if you like, put pressure on those non-OPEC members like the United States, which are now producing more oil. That's right. And if we look previously when they have uh, defended market share, which is to your second strategy, it has really been done so that they target U.S. shale oil production. And if you look at the supply curve for U.S. oil shale costs, it actually is quite low. So if you're really talking the marginal, marginal supply, yes, we're talking 60 to $65 a barrel uh, for, for U.S. But if you go down to where most of their supply is coming from, we are talking 40 to $45 a barrel. So huh. we know OPEC Plus have no appetite to go down to those levels. Yes. And so this story about defending market share, I think what OPEC Plus will, will have to do now in coming months and in coming years, it will really start setting a new uh, almost paradigm for, for oil prices and potentially at lower levels. We're That's calling it. 65 to 75, but it's a very hard one to call. I'll tell you what, Vivek, uh, always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time.